In this video, we're going to focus on how we can change the scale structuring of the numbers here, and you will see that it will instantly match as well with the tooltip. Here we're using the Indian rupee structure, and we have the official uh, form number formatting that is being used in India, which is quite different than the standard. But of course, we can convert this into any number formatting structure in ChartJS. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers question, which is how to format numbers in the Y scale in ChartJS. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to shorten long data labels on the Y axis in ChartJS. And in here, Jonathan Ui Jong asked a specific question here. And this is what he asked. I hope I don't ask too much, but how can we set the, the value on 100 uh, or 1200k to basically here with a proper formatting here thank you so much so eventually i responded i gave him a sample here however eventually he gave an answer back and he found a certain option here so this option was quite useful that i realized that this is probably a very suitable item to cover so he gave here the uh, the specific answer but let's start to break it down how we can apply this because this becomes quite interesting because it is very suitable for for dollars for uh, different structures like Japanese yen uh, the Indian rupee and all kind of structure how these numbers are being used so let's start to look at this so the first thing what I want to do here is first of all here go to charges3.com getting started you're going to get the default code if you see this error here for some reason I get this error here but I noticed that on my other computer, it doesn't show, uh, it doesn't have any errors. Or so probably my settings is somewhere incorrect. However, copy this chunk of code here because we're going to use this code here. Copy that, and then we're going to put in here. We paste this in here, and once we did that, cut out this, or at least for me, I cut out the title here. Save this. If you want to understand what this code does, or specifically the JavaScript, watch this specific video that covers it from top to bottom. So refresh here now we have our nice chart here and if we extend now the code here let's start to extend here the numbers you might notice that we have a normal a normal standard numbering here so if i let's put in here uh, i don't know 18 million if i'm not mistaken yes so if i save this now and refresh you can see here while these others are not hardly showing because it's so minimal you can see we have a standard format here this might be suitable but if you look, for example, in the Indian formatting, it's quite different. And that's quite interesting. So let's start to work on how can we play around with the format. So in ChartJS, there's a built-in function, which is absolutely phenomenal, and it's quite straightforward to use. So let's start to look at it. All we have to do here, we go to Options. We put in here an Enter, and then we say Local with an E. Then in here, we can indicate the specific formatting. By default, it is English US so if I save this now and refresh you can see there's no real difference if we do another one let's say uh, Germany um, DE I guess for Germany you can see here nothing happens however let's change this to for example uh, English but then Indian structuring so I end save this and refresh you can see here now the structure here has been completely different, which is quite interesting. So you can create a format for this. And then maybe you might say, well, what about if I would like to add up a currency symbol? Well, let's start to add up this. So for this, we do need to work with the callback. So let's start to go here into the scale. And basically, we're going to focus here on the Y scale because the Y scale consists of the numbers. And you can see here as well, the tooltip grabs the same structuring here. So what we're going to do here, then here in in the Y scale, we're going to put in here an enter, and then here we're going to put in here ticks, because basically in the ticks, these are what we call ticks, the, or the tick label, and this is the tick line here. You can see this line here. So this is related to the ticks, the tick label and the tick line. And what we want to do here is specifically in the ticks, adjust this or add up here now a currency symbol. So how can we do this? We create here now a callback without the S, and then in here we're going to put in a few parameters, which is the value, comma, we can put an index, comma, and values. 
And this is basically a function, so we're going to use here a arrow operator. And then in here, we're going to return the following. So if you would say return, we just only return the value, which would be basically the value here, it will not show you the way you would expect. So if I save this now and refresh, uh, oh, all right, so you can see here we get an error. Let's double check why probably we didn't put a comma here. Let's save this again, refresh. There you are. So now you can see the tooltip works, but here now this has not contained or doesn't contain anymore the same formatted structuring. And the reason why right now is because of the return here, it overwrites or overrules the settings here. So it basically doesn't recognize this setting anymore. If I save this, refresh here, no real difference here. Same here, the formatting here maintains the default, which is the US is the default. And, but this one here, it just like that. So what we're going to do here now, is we have to convert this formatting correctly, what we could do here just to keep this here active, just for one reason, is just to get the tooltip in the same formatting. And then now we need to work here on this. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say return, and then we're going to change here a few items. What we need to do here now, instead of this upper one, we're going to say here new. The new here, we do here international formatting. So we say int, and then we, so I-N-T-L with capital I for India, and then in here, number, capital number over capital N for Nancy, and then format with a capital F for Foxtrot. So in here, we can now start to break down our items. So what we need here, for example, in our case, we're still working with the Indian structure. So we have the English Indian formatting for the number. So we're going to grab this formatting here. Once we have this, we're going to put in here comma, because what we really want to do here is specifically adding a symbol. But this formatting is required as well. And then what we're going to do here is, we're going to put in here curly braces, and then in here, we're going to say style. Basically what we're doing here is a object destructuring. We're going to destructure the object and specify individually each item. So we could do it even like this because you might notice that this is just basically an array structuring. So we could do it like this. And then here we could say the currency. So we say here currency object. And this currency object, put a comma here. Then we could put here another enter. So it's like this. Then we can say here currency, which is basically this one here. Now it's considered an object. And here we can say the symbol that we want to use. In our case, we want to use the Indian rupee. So we say I-N-R, all capitalized, comma. And then we can start to put in a certain structure here. We could do all kind of options here. We can say here the maximum significant digits. And here equals three. So we can have the structuring of the three. And then we put in here, once we did this, put in here dot. Then we say your format, and what are we going to format? Basically here is the value here. So what is the value? It is basically this value here, but unformed. This is right now value unformatted. So we need to grab this value and put it back into the structure that we want it to have. So we're going to grab this here, put it in here, and once we did this, semicolon here. So if we save this now, and refresh, you can see now, how we have our structure. So we have our structure now exactly similar with the tree here, two, two, and one. And then we have here the uh, Indian rupee symbol. So basically here we have, if I'm not mistaken, it's the luck and the, the core. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. I, I did some Googling on it, but forgive me about uh, the uh, structure or the naming of it. So I'm not really familiar with that, but that's basically what I've uh, understood. However, those things are built in such a way here. So now we have this one, and maybe you might say, well, what about other symbols as well? So if you want to change it, let's say we want to grab here now, instead of the Indian structure, we want to get here the Philippine peso. So we're going to put in here the currency PHP, and here we're going to change it as well to PH, and this will be PH. And if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now we get the Philippine peso and the standard structuring that is common in the Philippines for the numbering. So this is a quite nice structure. And of course you could do this with all kinds of symbols here for Euro symbol and then here uh, EU and this, I guess that's English as well. And this will be EU as well. If I save this and refresh, 
we have here now this structuring here. And this is basically a way to format your numbers. So you have the easy way, which this one will apply and affect everything, but it will not show you a currency symbol. So if you want to have the currency symbol, you need to work with a callback. And if you can see here right now, we don't have anything on the tooltip. Basically, we should have him also in the tooltip a specific callback for that as well. So if you're interested in also modifying the tooltip or go even more deeper with tooltip customization, I would highly recommend you this specific video about how to add more information in the tooltips in Chart.js. This video is a 20 minute video that covers basically everything what you really need to know about tooltips so you can really customize it from top to bottom.